How can you transmit a complex baseband digital signal? Well, let's start by looking at a real signal and then look at the complex. So here is the frequency domain representation of a typical real signal. The Fourier transform is conjugate symmetric. We know that that's true for real signals. And for more information about conjugate symmetry and other signal basic properties, you can look at the links in the description below this video. Now, if we want to transmit this signal, the most basic way to do it is to multiply it by a cos waveform. So cos 2 pi times the carrier frequency times time. And if we do that, then we get uh, if we have multiplication in the time domain gives us convolution in the frequency domain. And the cos has two spikes at the carrier frequency and the negative carrier frequency. Again, for more information on this, there are videos in the description below, links to those videos. So here we have the effect of having multiplied in the time domain by a carrier waveform. And this is the most basic amplitude modulation. We take a baseband signal, baseband, and we turn it into a passband signal that can oscillate in an antenna at that frequency. This also is a real signal because we can see it is complex conjugate symmetric. I'm only plotting the amplitude here, but uh, we're, we're taking the case where it's a real signal to start with. So if it's real at the baseband, when you multiply by cos, it's real at the passband. Okay, now let's think about complex baseband digital signals, which is what we're looking at here in this video. So what's the difference? Well, complex baseband signals are not conjugate symmetric in the frequency domain. So I'm going to, going to draw one here as a sort of typical uh, example, not really typical, but it's a, we're trying to make it absolutely clear that it is not a real signal because this is definitely not symmetric. Now, what would happen to this signal? Let's just, if, if we could do it, uh, let's see what happens if we multiply by cos. Well, in this case, uh, we would get, again, this convolved with the delta functions in the frequency domain from the cos, uh, one of them at this frequency here, uh, so it would be like this, uh, and the other one at this frequency here. So this would be like this. And again, we can clearly see that at the carrier, if we were even able to do this, at the carrier, we would not have symmetry. So this is not real. Even if it were real and you tried to multiply by the cos, it's not real in the carrier. So the question is, back to the question, how can you transmit a complex baseband digital signal? What even is a complex baseband digital signal? As we've said here, it's not real. So if it's not real, what is it? So let's think about that just for a minute. So I'm just going to fill in these graphs in a minute, So, but let's look down here and understand more about complex baseband signals. Now, here's one example of 16 QAM. It's also part of OFDM, so it's part of 4G and 5G mobile cellular standards that you want to send digital signals which are complex at the baseband. So let's understand what this is. Well, here's a constellation diagram. Again, there's a video on constellation diagrams in the link below this video. And what we're doing with a digital signal is we're moving between complex coefficients of the carrier waveform, or another way of saying that is complex values at the baseband. So here, for example, uh, is uh, the real and imaginary components of these 16QAM, and over a fixed time period, capital T, you will be sending one of these constellation points. So for example, you might be sending this one first, uh, and then followed by uh, this one down here, for example, and then moving, of course, between all of these. This is how we represent the data. So what this means is our complex baseband digital signal is actually made up of two components. One is the real component and the other is the imaginary component, what we call the imaginary component, but actually I prefer to think of them as two real components. Now we represent them as real and imaginary, but we could actually also represent them as two real waveforms. 
One of them tells you about the values in the real direction here. So you go from this level here to this one, to this one, to this one. So you're picking between one of those four levels when your digital data is uh, encoded to a constellation point. And the other one is the imaginary one, which is also a real signal, which is going between these four levels here. So now we have this way of viewing a complex digital uh, baseband signal. We can view it as two separate signals, both of which are real. And that's the way I prefer to think about it. So these are both real signals. So, okay, so what we could do is we could take our real signal uh, and do exactly what we did along the top line here, and we could multiply it by cos and then we could transmit it. And what would we do at the receiver? Just let's think about that one for a minute. Let's extend this across here and see what happens at the receiver if we were to do that. Well, we have this here and the way to demodulate this at the receiver, so this is the signal being transmitted and it goes through the channel and at the receiver, when you receive it, you can also multiply it again by the same thing, by cos 2 pi fc t. And this is the way to demodulate this most basic amplitude modulation technique. And what that does again, it takes this and again, because you're multiplying in the time domain, again, it's going to convolve in the frequency domain, this function with two delta functions. And what that's going to do is it's going to take this and it's going to move it to be centered on the first delta, or the, the positive FC. So it takes the center here and centers it on positive FC. And it also takes this and centers it on negative FC. And the result is that you get these components at twice the carrier frequency and negative twice the carrier frequency. And you also get a component at the baseband again, which is twice the height of these two because the one that got shifted up adds to the one that got shifted down. And so this is, and again, there's a video on the channel with more information about that, uh, we can find in the link below. So this is what you get at the receiver. And then to recover the original signal, you apply a low pass filter. And the low pass filter, uh, I'm just gonna draw it with dots here, is going to, uh, you, it multiple, it's a filter, so it does a convolution in the time domain, which means a multiplication in the frequency domain, and it means it zeroes out these components and keeps this component, and you recover your original signal. So for here, for the real component here, for the real signal, which is this component here, uh, which is the signal which is going from the, in this direction between these values, we could take that real signal there, we could treated exactly like the top line here, and we would be able to transmit it and receive it. What do we do with the imaginary component? So I'm gonna call it imaginary here, but it's actually, as we said, it's also a real signal. We've got to send that as well. How can we do it? Well, let's think, is there something else we could do other than multiply by cos? And the answer is yes, there's another waveform, and let's look at that for a minute. So if we had another real signal, and so this might be uh, here, we're thinking about this, this one over here. We label it as imaginary, but it's, as I say, it's really a real signal. So the Fourier transform of this has a symmet conjugate symmetric Fourier transform. It's, there's no difference between this one and this one. This one has this property. If we were to take the Fourier transform of this signal here. Okay, and so this one, we could now multiply, instead of cos, let's multiply it by sine of two pi FCT. Okay, and what would it do? Well, the Fourier transform of sine is also two delta functions at fc and minus fc. And so, again, we're multiplying in the time domain, so we're convolving in the frequency, and again, we will get this shape here. Again, I'm only plotting the magnitude here. Let me make that clear by doing these dotted lines, uh, these lines with a dot between them. I'm plotting the magnitude here. These two differ because they've got different phases, but we're not plotting them, we're just plotting the magnitudes. So conceptually, we can do the same thing. We multiply by sine instead of cos uh, for a second waveform. We get this, and then in the demodulator, again, we can multiply by sine again of two pi FCT, this time sine instead of the cos. And again, we get the same thing uh, in the amplitude domain, and it'll have slightly different phase. And the, that's actually where the important uh, element is here. And again, you do a low pass filter. Okay, so what, we've, what we can see is, 
If we had two signals, like we have here, we could multiply one by cos and get this. We could multiply the other one by sine and get this. And the question is, can we do them both at the same time? So could we multiply this one by a cos and we would have this spectrum and send it at exactly the same time as multiplying this one by sine? It doesn't look like it from these graphs because they occupy exactly the same frequency components. It appears from here that the two waveforms would add up together and therefore interfere with each other and therefore not be able to be separated at the receiver and you wouldn't be able to go back to get your original waveforms uh, at the receiver to find out what was transmitted. That's what it appears to be the case if you're only looking at the magnitude but as I said the phase is absolutely critical. Let's understand that. So what we'd like to do as I said we'd like to add these two together and then transmit them across a channel at the same time. Now what are we going to do at the receiver? Let's try to understand that. Uh, and so we're going to take that signal and for the first, uh, to get this real one back, we're going to do what we did up here. So we're going to multiply. So this one is, this signal here, the real one would be multiplied by cos. I'm just going to do multiply by cos there. This one's going to be multiplied by sine before they're transmitted. That's what we're doing here. And then once they're transmitted at the receiver, this one we're going to multiply by cos and this one we're going to multiply by sine. And let's see what we get. So this real component here, which multiplied by cos, went through here and comes up and multiplies by cos, that's the top line here. And this one would recover the original signal here. But there's also going to be this component multiplied by sine going through and coming out and then being multiplied by the cos because they are added together in the channel. So this component will exist along this line and will be multiplied by the cos. And the question is, does it interfere with the cos? Let's understand that. And the same thing happens on the sine except reverse. So this sine will go through fine according to the bottom line, but this cos will come through, also go through here. Does it interfere with this one? That's our question. Well, to understand that, let's look at the mathematics of this top line. And here we have what's going on. And the important key thing, which we haven't really mentioned or spent a lot of time talking about so far, but the key thing is that it's a digital signal and these constellation points are constant over a time period of capital T. So between 0 and capital T and then 2T, 3T, 4T and so on. But over that time period, each 0 to t time period, these signals are constant. And so what that means is, let's just look at this 0 to t time period, for example. So for over 0 to t, that value of, and we're going to give the label alpha here for the constellation point. So the, alpha, the constellation point is alpha. Over that time period, alpha is constant. So we've got a constant times a cos times a cos. So here we have this in this equation, a constant, which is the digital data that's constant over that digital time slot, times cos times cos gives you cos squared. And this cos squared can be written as one half, uh, over here, one half uh, plus one half of cos of four pi FCT. That's a trigonometric uh, expression there that we know that uh, holds. And so now you can see uh, this integral here, uh, which has got alpha out the front and zero to t, so this equals this, uh, dt. And so now we can see here, uh, this is an integral over a cos waveform. This is cos squared, we didn't quite know how to do that, but this is now an integral over a cos waveform where there's an integer number of cycles in that range. And so uh, that's an important thing, if, even if it's not exactly, it's, it's almost exactly. And so this, the integral over that time period of this cos waveform will be zero. And all you're left with is the half times alpha. And so this is going to equal alpha, uh, this is going to equal capital T on two times alpha. Alpha was the digital data. So let's remind ourselves what we've done here. This is we're looking at the real signal here. It's going through times cos times cos again. That's why we got cos squared. And at the output, we're going to sample it at, so we're going to multiply it by cos and then we're going to sample it at the time period uh, T equals capital T. And out of here, we're going to get from that component, we're going to get capital T, a scaled version of alpha. 
So this one goes through fine. Now let's look at what happens to this one as it goes through this path to see if it interferes. So here's our integral for this. We've got alpha for the imaginary component coming through times uh, the sine here, the times the sine, and then it goes up here and can we multiply by the cos in the receiver. And now let's look at this to see if this is going to contribute and therefore interfere with this uh, value that's the one we want to have go through on that channel. And the answer is here, well, again, we can use a trigonometric expression here and we'll see, I won't do it here, but you can do it yourself. Uh, we will get one component which will have uh, a, the addition of these two terms and the other component will be the subtraction of these two terms and that will be sine of each of those. So we'll get a sine of the addition plus a sine of the subtraction. So the sine of the subtraction will be sine of zero, and that is zero. And so what about the sine of the addition? Well, the sine of the addition inside this integral will be exactly the same as the case we had over here, where you've got an integral over a, 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 a complete integer number of cycles, and so that is also going to equal zero. So this equals zero. And that's the important element, this important critical aspect of the cos and the sine. We, because of this property, we say that they are orthogonal. And this is the key property that enables us to send two different signals at the same time in the same bandwidth. So here they are, they're being sent at the same time in the same bandwidth. And they don't interfere with us, with each other in terms of the digital signal. So when you sample them, at capital T. This one will only have this component here that was multiplied by cos, and this output here will only have this one which was multiplied by sine. And this is called a quadrature mixing. So we're not just mixing in, in the traditional way for amplitude modulation by a single carrier. Now we've got carriers with phase offset. So this is a cos and this is a sine. They are at the same frequency, both at FC, the same carrier frequency. They do mix in the channel, but because one's a cos and one's a sine, and because of this property over the digital time period, capital T, they cancel each other out. And so the real part can be received properly and correctly at the outside this output, and the imaginary part can be received properly there. And therefore, at the receiver, you can reconstruct your complex baseband digital signal. You couldn't just send it directly with the, with the traditional way of uh, single carrier modulation, but if you use quadrature carrier modulation, I think you can see now that you can do it in a way where you can reconstruct the original signal and you can have sent a complex baseband digital signal even though it's not a real signal and doesn't really exist. So hopefully this video has given you more insight into what complex baseband means and how you transmit digital signals. If it has, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And again, look in the details below the video where you'll find links to other videos and a web page where there's a fully categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.